Hello everyone and welcome to section 12.3 on managing our resources. I hope that you are enjoying these video lectures and this will be the ending lecture of chapter 12 um, and really the end of our textbook. Uh, so um, congrats on making it this far. Uh, you've done a really good work. Uh, let's get going on section 12.3. This is a little bit of a longer one, just warning you. Um, examining our resources. Um, when you take a look at the resources, there's two different kinds um, of natural resources. You have non-renewable and renewable. Um, one of the non-renewable ones, for instance, is oil or natural gas. Uh, these things, I believe, were laid down by the flood of Noah's day. Well, Noah's flood just doesn't happen too much anymore. That's a good thing, right? All flesh died and only eight people lived. Uh, that'd be a really bad thing to have happen. But regardless, um, we're not making too much oil anymore or natural gas. Uh, but we are making, um, so to speak, making uh, more solar energy. Uh, that's renewable. Uh, we have a blazing ball of fire doing nuclear fusion up in the air, which we can harvest the energy from. Very cool. Um, some more renewable resources, maybe um, uh, lumber. Unless we cut all of our trees down, trees make seeds, and seeds, well, can be made into more trees. It's renewable. Sustainable development seeks to maintain our lifestyle. So we don't want to, like, um, cut people's power off, but preserving resources for future generations. Many people estimate, for instance, that we're going to be out of gasoline and, and uh, fossil fuels in about 10 to 20 years. Well, um, by the time my daughter, Ray, grows up, um, it's possible that uh, when she's my age, we're going to be completely out of fossil fuels. So she can't drive my car that I have now. Uh, that's pretty crazy to think about. We're in changing times. Um, but we, we do want to preserve all of our resources, um, particularly the non-renewable ones. We can waste energy from the sun. Um, we don't want to... Ooh! Skype call, watch out. Hold on. I'm back. We're going to have Skype calls all morning, so uh, listen in. Um, anyway, envi environmental technology develops new methods of conservation through the application of environmental science. Let's go on to the next slide. Managing renewable resources. Although many resources are renewable, it is possible to use these items faster than the earth naturally replenishes them. Uh, we already talked about trees. Um, it is possible to go to an entire forest and chop it down and use it all and not replant. And we're going to be in some big trouble. Um, and uh, it also happens with water, and that's why we have uh, what's called... Uh, water reclamation, the process of quickly and safely returning wastewater to the environment. Um, and so a lot of the uh, water that we use uh, is recycled, filtered, cleaned, and um, put back into the environment. And that's, that's a very good thing because only 3% of our world is actually uh, fresh water. And a lot of that fresh water is found in the polar ice caps and, and such. And so we don't want to be drinking salt water for the rest of our lives. And it's very expensive to turn salt water into regular water. Um, so anyway, food for thought. Using non-renewable resources, once they're gone, they're gone. You know, I, I was part of a lab once um, at a uh, Crown College of the Bible. It's strange. Um, but anyway, this guy... Um, took a pressure cooker, you know, like one you might use for rice, and he put a whole bunch of uh, organic material in there, and he left the pressure cooker on for a month. <laughs> um, and at the end of that uh, month, he actually had in his pressure cooker, um, he had some what would essentially have been coal or um, fossil fuel. Um, but do you really want to leave a pressure cooker on for a month in order to, you know, heat up your house or to, you know, run your car? No. 
Um, it's not possible to make more. So we have to research new methods of extracting what we have. And so let's say, you know, maybe at the very bottom of the ocean, there might be some oil reserves. We're going to have to research new ways to get that. Um, and so anyway, that's uh, part of sustainable development. Another call. Watch out. It's a bad time to do lessons. All right. Recycling programs can be beneficial but require a lot of attention. Um, think about it this way. Now, I'm, I'm a recycler. I love recycling. I recycle. Um, community Christian school doesn't recycle. Isn't that terrible? Um, but that's okay. It takes a lot of work to recycle. Um, imagine if we, uh, imagine if we had to separate all these different things and try to, um, and try to, uh, get it all in one place. That's, that's a lot of work. Um, and uh, some states even pay you to recycle. Like in Hawaii, I think you make 10 cents for every um, can or bottle you recycle. Well, that's a lot of money. Um, so anyway, that's non-renewable resources. Fossil fuels. Um, uh, they're formed from once living organism. Uh, found in the form of petroleum or crude oil. Um, consists of a, a whole bunch of hydrocarbons or hydrogens and carbons. Produces gasoline, kerosene, propane, etc. And they're um, they're harvested a lot of times from these oil rakes, which you can see on the right. That's a very, very impressive one. Natural gas is a vapor consisting of methane. Um, methane is a hydrocarbon as well. It consists of one hydrogen and four carbons uh, chemically. Not that you would know that. Uh, but anyway, it's used in heating, cooking, generating electricity. Um, these are various types of fossil fuels. Um, disadvantages of fossil fuels. You ready? Non-renewable. And they're a major source of pollution. So, um, you ever, you ever go to like your screened in lanai if you have a, like a nice house and you turn on the stove, um, to like a um, to like a gas grill and you get yelled at by your parents. Hey, that's, that's giving off, you know, carbon monoxide or, uh, you know, you, we won't be able to breathe. Um, or you can't use a charcoal grill inside. You, you don't usually see your parents using a charcoal grill indoors. And if you do, it's not a good thing because uh, it pollutes stuff. Um, it does. Um, it's a disadvantage. As Christians, uh, we need to wisely use our natural resources. Um, we don't want to pollute things crazy. Um, some cities right now, particularly in uh, China and Hong Kong, I've showed you pictures of, of just some massive amount of pollution. Um, and uh, you can even go, uh, and I'll show you, I'll pull up Google, um, air quality in Beijing right now um, and let's see real-time air quality let's check out the website um, right now um, it is moderate it's acceptable <laughs> however um, earlier today you see uh, earlier today watch out um, right here there was a dangerous amount of um, pollutants in the air. Well, if you think about it, um, that's not such a good thing. You go outside and you can't even breathe in the air without, you know, it affecting your lungs. Not good. All right, let's continue on. Renewable energy. Um, biomass energy, energy obtained from plants and animal products like wood gas derived um, from biomass, ethanol, um, you crush up some corn or grains, um, you ever see, uh, maybe at a gas station, there's, um, ethanol gas, it's usually cheaper, um, sometimes it's called, like, E84, no, E85, maybe, um, those are a lot of ethanol-based, um, uh, fuels, and they come straight from corn, just, crush up the corn, derive the ethanol, uh, biogas, um, agricultural wastes as natural gas. All these things are renewable. 
Uh, so is solar energy. Now, the solar energy requires something really specific. The sun has to be shining that day, um, or else you don't get too much solar energy. So it's kind of inconsistent, but when it works, it works really well. Uh, source is not constant. Passive solar energy. Um, sometimes energy just naturally hits a building, heats it directly, um, so you don't have to run your heater. Um, so maybe it's like a 60 degree um, day outside, but you get in your car and it's like smoldering and you're like, why is that? Well, it traps energy in the car. Another kind is active solar energy where we actively put out um, solar panels in order to harvest energy from the sun and they look like that. Sometimes you see them along um, houses and they look kind of funny, but they do a really good job. Um, on the right, I have a picture of a photovoltaic cell. It works with um, positive and negative charges and the movement of those charges to generate electricity through electric flow. And it converts the sunlight directly into electricity. There's also um, a, different kinds of, a different kind of solar energy production called concentrating solar energy. It uses lenses and mirrors to focus the sun's rays into a small beam, and that, um, and that beam heats a fluid. The fluid um, boils water, and the boiling of water turns a steam turbine, and that generates electricity. Um, that's a less effective way um, and less common way than just a photovoltaic cell. Um, if you've been next to a wind turbine, I've been next to a wind turbine, um, and uh, I actually have a cabin that I used to um, camp at in a small town in Pennsylvania uh, that had government contracts to put all kinds of wind turbines on this property. And I stood under a wind turbine. If you stand directly under it, you can't even see the top. They are humongous. Um, and these are devices that generate electricity through motion. The motion of the wind, naturally occurring wind, um, just based on uh, changes in temperature and pressure in the sky. Um, this wind causes motion, turns a turbine, and, um, and generates electricity. Um, it's called wind power. Very nice. Um, a wind farm is a large area covered in wind turbines. What's the problem? Well, if we look at our handy-dandy um, weather report, which, of course, my phone is not opening. I'm going to have to ghost phone. Um, we look at our handy-dandy weather report. We see Bradenton, Florida has winds at 9 miles per hour. Well, that'll turn a turbine a little bit. Um, what you really want is you know, a little bit of a windier day. Uh, Pennsylvania, 11 miles per hour. So it's going to turn the turbine. But you, you want to, you want a little bit faster winds, really get that turbine spinning. But not too fast. Yes, Miss Callum? With all these interruptions, it makes it seem like a real classroom, right? That's funny. Anyways, um, we were talking about wind power and how it's not consistent. Um, however, you can't have wind turbines turning too fast. At a certain point, they'll fly off the handle. So if you have a hurricane, it's not like, wow, we're getting all this power. It's shut the thing down. I'm good, Mr. Moore. Um, an environmental splash. Um, hydroelectric power, electricity that is produced from the energy of moving water. So what they do is they have a, um, they have a, a uh, river where it meets another river, they build a dam, and then they send the water through a specific tunnel where it turns a turbine and goes through a um, downstream outlet. It's the most widely used and easily available. Um, water is a very consistent source, a very consistent source of, um, of energy because the we can expect the water to be flowing all the time. The problem is, is these can actually be pretty dangerous, I'd say pastor of mine fall into a hydroelectric dam and he got stuck and um, uh, that would not be good and uh, I was at the same place and I almost got stuck
So, 